My name is Mary Grizzard, and I'm a nurse practitioner specializing in palliative care um, at an oncology clinic in Tennessee. In my role with palliative care, I spend a lot of time with the patient to educate them and kind of let them know what to expect um, so that they could have a more successful Palliative care is an extra layer of support for patients that specializes in symptom management in order to improve quality of life. Palliative care is not end-of-life care, hospice care. When we're focusing on helping patients get through therapy, we try to look at their mental health, physical health, financial burdens, and their support systems. Many physical factors can affect patients mentally and cause more stress. Like if they're losing weight, they may be worried. Um, many times we have patients with weight loss and their family members become more worried about them. And so then they get upset because they feel like they look more like their disease rather than like themselves. And so that creates a whole nother level of anxiety. Um, and a lot of times if patients aren't sleeping, they become more anxious. Um, if they have a new ache or pain, they start worrying, what's going on? What's my disease doing? Um, and many times these aches and pains can be predictable and they just need a little bit of extra support um, and they need to know what the expectations are and that'll help um, alleviate a lot of that anxiety. I think it's important to coach patients to know what to expect. It builds a level of trust um, which will be important for the rest of their therapies and for them to have successful treatments. It's important to find the source of the patient's issues, that way you can actually fix it and you're not just putting band-aids and treating other symptoms and then you're kind of chasing it, giving more medications to treat symptoms and side effects when really that's not the issue. There's different types of pain. Some pain is more nerve pain and that feels like a radiating, um, tingling, numbness. And then there's more tissue pain which is just like sharp shooting or like a dull ache. I think pain is tricky because it's very subjective, so you have to ask a lot of questions to figure out exactly what type of pain the patient is feeling. Then you've got to get some descriptive words. Is it numbness, tingling, burning, radiating? Is it worse in the morning? Is it a constant dull ache? Uh, is it keeping them up at night? How is it affecting their quality of life and their day-to-day -day activity? Um, you've got to really ask a lot of questions so that you can find out exactly what's going on so that you can help them and improve their quality of life. When patients have increased shortness of breath, it's important to learn the source. So we need to know if it's disease related, anxiety related, and then if we check their oxygen level or get a chest x-ray, it'll help us further investigate what's actually causing their shortness of breath. Mental distress can cause shortness of breath. Many patients are anxious before they have scans or before they come into clinic. And so a lot of times just talking through those expectations and understanding their anxiety will help them feel better. Esophagitis is common in patients. I think a big piece of it is education. They need to know what to expect and what it feels like. It's a lot of nerve pain, so it's burning. Um, it hurts to eat, so there needs to be a lot of education on tips of how to eat your meals because it's important to get that nutrition in. So sticking to soft things, um, nothing with like acid. A lot of times we'll also use magic mouthwash kind of before meals. That way it helps you eat a little better because with esophagitis, if you're not eating, it's going to make your fatigue worse, you're going to have weight loss, and you're going to have other complications that just make you feel bad. Nerve pain, if it's bad enough with esophagitis, typically will need some medications. Um, medications that I commonly use will be gabapentin or methadone. Lack of appetite can be caused by several things. It could be depression, it could be dysphagia, it could be their disease, um, it could be, you know, it could be anything really. Um, so it's important to talk to the patients, get to know them and figure out what exactly is causing them not to eat. I think it's important to talk to patients ahead of time about expectations and maintaining their weight because if they start losing weight, they're going to feel worse. Um, they're going to become more fatigued, which may cause them to stay in the bed more, which may cause depression, and everything kind of starts snowballing. So maintaining weight is really important and getting those calories in to help set a patient up for success. If you have a patient that's fatigued, it's important to find the source of their fatigue. You want to do some lab work, see if it's their thyroids, check their blood count, see if um, you need to rule those out first. And then if they continue to struggle with fatigue, many times we'll use low dose Ritalin to help with that fatigue. You want to be cautious though, because if you have a patient that's anxious, the Ritalin can increase that anxiety. Or if you have a patient that's struggling with anorexia, it could worsen their anorexia. So you have to be mindful. 
I think in the elderly population, we typically manage patients the same. Sometimes they may need a little more hydration. I think when you're thinking about the elderly population, it's important to know their caregivers and what support system they have, because many times with them, you run into issues with they don't have a lot of support, and so you just have to be mindful of that. Patients with poor performance status or comorbidities are typically managed the same. They may have more symptoms because of those comorbidities, so you just got to be aware of those. Palliative care is important in the oncology world because it may help patients get through therapy easier and more successfully. Um, research has shown that with palliative care, um, patients may have better outcomes and take less breaks in their therapies.